So we all know that money is what makes the world go round. But what if there were things that we know about money that turned out not to be true? In this video, I'm gonna be revealing seven truths about money that the banks don't want you to know about and are not gonna tell you about themselves. So before we jump in, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can keep your finger on the pulse of all things business and finance and make sure that you and your company can truly thrive in this year. So let's uncover the secrets that the banks would rather be kept under wraps and show how you can take control of your financial future. So truth number one, banks are in the business of making money, not helping you save it. If you take a moment to think about it, banks are one of the most profitable industries in the world because they make money from your deposits and investments. They're not just like inventing new money behind the scenes, they are charging for the money that you're putting in them to hold. According to McKinsey and Company, banking industry profitability reached a 14 year high in 2022 with expected returns on equity between 11.5 and 12.5%. Revenue globally for banks grew up to $345 billion. So with that being said, Oftentimes, it pays to shop around for the best services and interest rates available from different providers. Oftentimes, as business owners, we get into a rhythm of using a certain bank just out of convenience. But if there are better opportunities out there, if there's a bank that's willing to put its neck out in order to ensure your business with them, that's who you should be working with, not the, just the one that's closest to the house. Anytime you're jumping into a new relationship with these banks, make sure you know all the fees associated with the banking service so you can make an informed decision about which bank is right for you and your business's needs. Number two, fees can add up quickly and banks don't make them clear to customers. So in many cases, banks don't go out of their way to warn you about fees associated with any of their services. And so unless you're really looking at that beforehand, they can quickly add up and take a huge chunk out of your wallet. So many times customers don't even realize how much they're paying in fees until it's too late and high fees may deter them from using banking services altogether. So in a perfect world, banks would be abundantly transparent about any kind of potential fees you might be running into or you know any kind of situation that may come up that's gonna cost you money. But they are a business at the end of the day and businesses tend to get busy. So just like you, they're not here to babysit you every 10 minutes and go, hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There might be a fee if you do this or this. So what does this mean? It just means you need to do your research. If you're gonna open up a business checking account or savings account or a business credit card or whatever the case is you just need to make sure that you're aware oh hey this could be a potential fee i got to be careful i got to make sure i got at least 200 bucks in that account at all times or whatever the situation is just be informed do that homework beforehand and you're not going to run into these kind of issues at the banks may not be forthcoming with all the time so truth number three banks don't really have the money that they're lending to borrowers banks operate on a system called fractional reserve which allows them to keep only a small fraction of the money that they lend available on hand at any time. The 1913 Federal Reserves Act requires banks to maintain the minimum cash reserves needed to clear outgoing checks. So one of the cheapest ways to meet those reserve requirements is through retail deposits, aka the money you keep in your savings account. So banks don't just like take the money that you deposit and turn around and loan it at a higher interest rate. But what they do use the money for is that they balance their books and meet the necessary cash reserves that make those types of loans possible. So it's its own little working system internally. However, that means just wanting to liquidate everything that you've ever put in a bank on a moment's notice may not be so easy. It might be a little more complicated, it might take more time. So just because you've deposited X amount of thousand dollars, keep that in mind that that doesn't mean it's just ready to go. It may be a situation where you need to give that bank some notice before you start pulling out big chunks, you know, if, if some kind of investment or emergency comes up. So next truth, your bank may be selling your personal information. While the Cram Leach Bailey Act of 1999 prohibits banks from sharing your non-public personal info, like social security number, income, outstanding debt, etc., they do share your personal information for business and marketing purposes. So they may share your information with affiliated or non-affiliated companies for them to market their products and services to you. Now you can always opt out of these types of programs to keep the bank from sharing that info, but they're always gonna share your info with the government for legal investigations, credit reporting agencies, service providers on behalf of the institution. There's no getting around that part. Now, so far you might be hearing some of this information and starting to panic that oh the best solution is just to stuff my money under the mattress but we're not saying that what we're saying is 
that there are additional circumstances and complications that are associated with banks that you may not be aware of right now. However, we're gonna go into an explanation as to how to work alongside these banks and how to get the banks to work for you and not against you. But next truth here, bank employees are often under a lot of pressure to sell products that may not necessarily be in your best interest. Now, while many CEOs of banks have taken action to offer you know, customer-centric products or services that are in the best interest of the customer, Many employees of banks have mentioned that that philosophy hasn't necessarily trickled down to everyone working with the banks. What I mean by that is many bank employees have shared that credit card sales are paramount and that there's very little concern as to whether the customer actually needs or would qualify from such a card. In some cases, many workers who failed to meet these sales goals were often disciplined or denied promotions. So that starts creating a system of intense salesmanship. So many banks offer a bonus structure that is reliant on how many sales you've made. So again, banks are businesses. So you have to do your research. So don't necessarily believe at face value that a new card or loan is gonna magically be good for you just because you're told so by a representative. You wanna research any kind of card or loan option and look to see if it's really going to help you out. If the pros are gonna outweigh the cons and if it's not going to hurt your credit too much because some of those representatives may not even be looking at all the factors and may just be worried about reaching that next bonus tier or not getting yelled at and so they're just gonna push these kind of offers on every single person that comes across their desk. So just be careful. Just like when credit card offers are mailed to you, that didn't mean, hey, yeah, you should probably just go with every single one of these because then you'd have a thousand credit cards to your name and your credit score would be in the toilet. The idea is if an option comes, if an opportunity comes your way, take it in stride, look it over, really dig deep and see is this something that you really could benefit from? Next truth, you have more options than just banks when it comes to saving and investing money. There's higher yield money market accounts. So money market accounts are actually one of the simplest alternatives to just depositing money into a traditional savings account. And they are protected by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or FDIC, just like traditional savings or checking accounts are. So these accounts will typically pay much higher interest rates than just regular savings accounts, but money market accounts typically offer limited checking account services to go with them. And by limited, I'm talking like, usually customers can only write a maximum of like five to 10 checks a month. Like that's the amount of limited we're talking about here. Now as a traditional bank may offer a 0.10% interest rate for standard savings, a money market account may grab as high as 0.25% interest on a similar kind of account. So you'd be getting a considerable chunk of change added to whatever you're depositing. You can also do a CD, a certificate of deposit. Now these are ideal for someone who's not gonna touch their savings for a year or two at least. The longer you leave the money in a CD account, the more interest you earn. And interest rates for this account are higher than typical savings and checking accounts. But the trade-off is that your money is gonna be basically locked up for the term of the CD you agree to. If you touch it before, you're probably gonna have to pay fees and penalties because of it. According to bankrate.com, the annual average percentage yield for 2021 was 0.21% interest rate for a one year CD. And the average was 0.95% interest for two year CDs. So these are just a few options, but you wanna check with your financial advisor to make sure these accounts make sense for your situation. And the final truth here, bankruptcy is not the end all be all end of the world for you financially. So bankruptcy, is a big scary thing. However, it doesn't have to be a permanent situation. It is possible to recover and get back on track with financial security. Now, bankruptcy can help you clear your debts and give you somewhat of a fresh start in life. Bankruptcy protection will allow you to have time to reorganize your finances and look for ways to rebuild your credit score. There are lots of options available, such as debt consolidation and refinancing, which can make a bankruptcy much more manageable to deal with. With the right planning and professional advice, bankruptcy can become an opportunity to learn valuable money management skills that will benefit you in the long run. Now, that being said, it does not mean as soon as you have a little bit of debt to go rush to bankruptcy. Bankruptcies typically will stay on your credit report for anywhere from seven to 10 years, and that's a long time to deal with that sort of a burden. 
However, it doesn't mean that you're forever judged. It doesn't mean that you're forever locked out of getting credit again. It just means that if the worst happens to happen, you can still move on from it and begin the rebuilding process. We've had tons of clients who had to deal with bankruptcy who got themselves out of that situation after a while and were able to rebuild to a very luscious credit situation and plenty of business funding. But it's not gonna happen in the next 10 minutes after you file bankruptcy. It's It takes a little bit of time. So as I said earlier, the purpose of this video was not to scare you out of the banking system or to have you call your local bank and shut down every checking account you've got with them. The purpose is to really look at what is your relationship like with banks? Is this a situation where you have just sort of thrown money at them in hopes that it's safe and you just keep pulling it out and maybe you're paying fees or getting dinged with something here and there and you're not really utilizing your finances or your banking relationships to their highest potential? Well, if that's the case, you may want to talk to a professional, somebody like a financial advisor or even a service like Funding Grow. We've been in finance for over 15 years. And in that time, we have learned a lot about what banks are looking for in order to really kind of put you in that elite status. You know, if you have enough funding that you're putting into a bank, if you have enough resources or enough experience with working with the bank, you can get that sort of preferential treatment. And we know exactly what that's all about. And so oftentimes we help our clients to really establish stronger, better relationships with banks so that you're not falling into these sort of shadowy areas where you're getting dinged all the time, or you know, you're not getting the most out of your accounts, or the banks aren't giving you the kind of money that you need in order to invest how you want to invest, or whatever the case is. The idea here is, Banks can be a very powerful tool if you do your research and you know what you're looking for. With all that being said, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope this has helped sort of reevaluate some things in regards to how you see banks and how you're using your money with banks. And if you want any more information about what we can offer and what we can help you with, feel free to check out the masterclass in the description below. For everybody here, I'm Zach Ritchie. Again, I hope this has been helpful to you and we'll see you in the next one.